We have some pretty fun things to talk about today, but first things first, I want to give a huge thank you to you guys for the support you showed on the first video like this that I uploaded earlier this week, where basically I just rambled about some NHL topics that I wanted to talk about. I really enjoyed making that video, so I'm happy you guys enjoyed it as well. If you want me to continue this series, if you even want to call it that, then be sure to show your support on this video as well. Leave it a like, let me know down below that you enjoyed. And yeah, like I said, we have some pretty fun things to talk about in this video. First things first, we have some trade rumors regarding Regarding the Nashville Predators. Yesterday, Andy Strickland, who is a ringside reporter for Bali Sports Midwest, tweeted out here the hashtag Preds are actively shopping superstar Philip Forsberg. So it was pretty blunt. He didn't really elaborate on that at all. That was all he had in his tweet. And although it wasn't reported on by the likes of Elliot Friedman, Andy Strickland is a pretty reliable source. He has a decent track record when it comes to this type of thing. So I figured it was worth mentioning in this video and it was worth talking about. So obviously when this report came out yesterday from Andy Strickland, and kind of the initial reaction was confusion because obviously the Nashville Predators are having a really strong season. They're comfortably in that first wildcard position. There are, I think, 11 games over 500 at this point in the season. They're getting top tier goaltending from UC Saros. Roman Yossi is having a Norris caliber season. So why would they be actively shopping their best forward? And I think the answer to that is pretty simple. He is in the final year of his contract and is set to become an unrestricted free agent at the end of the season and is currently in the midst of the best season of his career. He already has 26 goals in just 38 games. His career high in goals is 33. He's likely going to shatter that this season. He has been the Nashville Predators best forward for like eight years now. This season is the sixth season in his NHL career in which he scored 25 plus goals. Even though the Nashville Predators are likely going to make the playoffs this year, Philip Forsberg isn't really the kind of player that you can just risk potentially losing for nothing. If the Nashville Predators get the sense that Philip Forsberg is likely going to test the market when free agency opens, then the most logical thing to do is probably look to trade him. He's 27 years old, is one of the more lethal goal scorers in the league, and his cap it is just $6 million, which is incredibly reasonable for the kind of player Philip Forsberg is, and when you consider that this is the final year of that deal, I'm sure in a trade, Nashville would be open to retaining some of that. Another thing is, I mentioned this when talking about Brock Besser in the most recent video, I'm sure Nashville is looking at what the Montreal Canadiens were able to get in return for Tyler Toffoli and thinking, you know, what could we get for Philip Forsberg, who is definitely a superior player to Tyler Toffoli, even though in Toffoli's case, he had term left on his deal and Forsberg is going to be a UFA at the end of the season. But still, I feel like the return for Philip Forsberg would be pretty huge. Now, that being said, just look at last year's trade deadline when there was so much talk about the Nashville Predators moving on from Matthias Eckholm. They decided to hold on to him and then obviously re-signed him. I could definitely see that happening here with Philip Forsberg. However, given the circumstances, it definitely makes sense for Nashville to at least be shopping Philip Forsberg Forsberg around, you know, entertaining offers and just seeing what's out there. Forsberg being potentially available just makes this trade deadline season that much more exciting. This deadline definitely has the potential to be the most exciting that we've had in a very long time. Obviously, with the likes of Philip Forsberg's name being out there in trade rumors now, you have JT Miller, Thomas Hurdle, Joe Pavelski, John Klingberg, Jacob Chitron. Now, I'm not going to get my hopes up too high on all those guys being moved because it is the NHL after all, but I'm pretty confident we're going to see at least a couple of the names I just mentioned to be moved over the next month or so. So those are my thoughts on the Philip Forsberg rumors. Now I want to shift focus to the Montreal Canadiens. In the last Ask Me Anything video, there was a question about Martin St. Louis and how long did I think he would be the interim coach of the Canadiens? Did I think he would be there next season? And basically my answer to that was, I don't think Montreal really cares about results at this point in the season. Wins, losses, it doesn't really matter. I feel like it was all going to come down to how the young players, the players that are going to be a big part of Montreal's future, are performing under Martin St. Louis. And the early returns on that are pretty fantastic. Nick Suzuki is thriving, but the one player I want to focus on is Cole Caulfield, who since St. Louis has taken over as interim head coach is a different player. I don't know what Ducharme was doing if he wasn't showing enough trust and confidence in his young players, Caulfield especially, if he wasn't, you know, giving them the freedom to go out and play their game. But man, it is night and day the difference from Cole Caulfield's performance to start this season under Dom Ducharme to him now playing under St. Louis. I seen somebody joking on Twitter last night after the Montreal Canadiens win against the Buffalo Sabres, and they basically said Montreal should fire Dom Ducharme again. But it really is insane the kind of impact coaches can have on players, young players especially. I feel like this doesn't really affect veterans and, you know, the top tier talent of the league as much. Obviously, you know, whoever McDavid's coach is, he's going to be the best player in the world. But for players like Nick Suzuki, like Cole Caulfield, and a lot of the guys on the Montreal Canadiens, a coach showing that they have trust in the players and having confidence 
in the players to play their game and perform well, it really makes a difference. So far in the seven games under St. Louis as head coach, Cole Caulfield has six goals and 10 total points. In those seven games, the Montreal Canadiens are currently on a four-game winning streak, and after their win last night against the Buffalo Sabres, here's some things that Nick Suzuki had to say. He said, I think both of us, talking about Caulfield and himself, are just playing with a lot of confidence, having fun out there. Each small play we're making, we're getting each other open and using our line mates well. It's been a ton of fun over the last seven games, and we want to keep that going. So even though it's been just a seven-game sample size, the early returns on Martin St. Louis look very good. He has this team energized. He has them having fun again, which, I mean, I can't imagine they're having much fun to start the season and for the majority of the season under Dom Ducharme, and I really feel like this stretch alone has earned St. Louis the right to come back and coach the Canadians again next season. I don't think he's going anywhere anytime soon. This is really great for the Montreal Canadiens and their fans. I can't imagine there was too many things to cheer about so far for Canadians fans this season, but you have to find those bright spots in bad seasons like this, and this stretch has definitely been a huge bright spot. Now, there is one more thing I want to talk about before we finish off this video, and that is the whole LTIR deal and teams, you know, kind of maximizing their cap space using the long-term injured reserve. Obviously, there's still a lot of salty people about what the Tampa Bay Lightning did last season, you know, having Kucherov on LTIR for longer than he probably needed to be, and then taking him off to return for the playoffs to maximize their cap space. Vegas is doing that right now with Mark Stone on the long-term injured reserve. That was really coincidental how it happened at the same time Jack Eichel was returning to the lineup so that they didn't have to make any trades to fit Eichel in under the cap. And now the Toronto Maple Leafs are in a position to kind of capitalize on this as well. Jake Muzzin went down with a pretty scary head injury in their matchup a couple of nights ago against the Montreal Canadiens. He's been placed on LTIR with a concussion, which honestly makes sense. I mean, he just returned from a concussion. It feels like not that long ago, so you definitely want to be safe with this and have him ease his way back into things. Don't rush anything. But now with Muzzin being on the LTIR, I believe the Toronto Maple Leafs are going to have close to $6 million in cap space, and Jake Muzzin's injury isn't something that should sideline him until next season. He should be able to come back for the postseason, so the Maple Leafs are really in a position to make a pretty big splash at the trade deadline. Elliot Freeman kind of made waves on hockey Twitter a couple of days ago when he floated the idea of a potential JT Miller trade to Toronto, and with their newfound cap space, that's definitely something that they could make work. They could also go after a guy like Philip Forsberg, who we talked about earlier in the video, and I'm sure this is going to make a lot of people mad, but in my personal opinion, I really don't care that teams are doing this, and Toronto is an example of a team that, you know, they're doing this by accident. They didn't plan for Jake Muzzin to go down with the injury that he went down with, but even in regards to Tampa Bay last season and, you know, Vegas this season when Stone went on LTIR right when Eichel came back, I really don't care because it's something that, you know, the current CBA and the NHL allows to happen. It's not cheating, it's not breaking any rules, or it wouldn't be allowed. So honestly, I don't really care. It's not something that I get angry about. And I really don't think you guys should be too mad about it either. It is what it is. If nothing changes, I honestly think this is something we're going to see happen a lot more often over the next couple of seasons. But that is pretty much going to do it for this video. I touched on basically everything that I wanted to talk about today, everything that was on my mind. I hope you guys enjoyed. Like I said, at the start. If you like these kind of videos and you want to see more, then be sure to drop a like. That is the best way to show your support. Let me know down below in the comment section that you enjoyed, and also leave your thoughts down below on all of the topics we touched on in this video. If you're new to the channel and you want more NHL content just like this, be sure to hit that subscribe button, and I'll talk to you all soon.